All right, you guys, welcome to part what would be considered three, where we're going to go ahead and texture um, our bag now that we have everything baked out. Um, what I want to focus on are the bulk of the materials first, kind of getting everything looking cool and, and set up, and then we'll go in and add kind of micro details. And like I always say, just kind of break things up. Uh, first thing I want to start off with just kind of sharing, I want to share my reference image with you guys. Um, it's important to have reference images uh, just so that we're not working from memory. A lot of times our memory can fail us. So it's always good to have something up, uh, something that we can look at. Uh, we can also um, color drop from our reference images from Substance Painter. So that's kind of cool as well. We can if we want this green, we can eye drop it uh, and move on. But uh, this is going to be set up, excuse me, this is going to be set up in another window. I'm just going to go ahead and slide it off the screen uh, and work with it there. I, uh, again, strongly suggest you guys having your own reference to uh, that you work from. But one thing I want to show you guys here, if you're not already um, familiar with, is Substance Source. So Substance Launcher, you can get, this is called Substance Launcher. You can get this on Substance's website or Algorith Algorithmics website. Uh, it just keeps everything up to date. But then we also have this uh, Substance Source link. So we have over, man, at this point, um, over 2,500 materials that we can choose from. A bunch of different things like uh, uh, cloth, ceramics, fabric, ground, uh, ground cover, leather, just tons of stuff. Um, so if we find something that we want, we can just click this, uh, send a substance painter and bam, it ends up, uh, right in our materials here. Uh, now I've previously downloaded a couple materials that I think well, prior, um, I've used, but I'm going to use them in this. If you guys want, you can find your own materials. If you want to make this a leather bag, cloth bag, um, just kind of work along with me. But this is a great tool to kind of speed up our workflow rather than having to create everything procedurally. And I'm going to kind of start with some of these uh, that we can then add on to later since we all pretty much have uh, Substance Source uh, any longer with the subscription. So this is going off to the side. Actually, I'll just get rid of that and get my notes up here. So first thing, let's deal with uh, our brass textures. So we have all these texture sets, buckles, um, the bag itself handles all this blah, 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 blah. We need to make sure that we are on the texture set that we want to work with. Um, a easy way to do that is hold control alt and right click and it switches, uh, between texture sets. So if I do the handles, control alt, right click, boom, it goes to handles, uh, straps, and we can jump between. So if there's ever a time where let's say, uh, you know, we're in this texture set here. We can't really see what we're working on. Let's just say I drab this bronze in and it applies the bronze to the bag. It's because we're on the wrong texture set. So again, something we just need to be cognizant of. Uh, again, what I will use a lot is control alt and right click. So I want to control alt right click on this, uh, um, what would name this? Buckles. Yep. And we can just also maybe just drag them onto the buckles themselves. Um, so looking at that, that's actually pretty dang close to what we have in the reference image. If I pull that up, um, it's a little more yellow. So let's go a little more yellow with these. Kind of put them somewhere in here. That's pretty cool. I don't like the pitting. How do we get rid of that? Maybe with the dirt slider? No. As asperity. There you go. So I'll cut that back. That looks pretty clean. So one down. Pretty easy, right? Nothing crazy with that. Let's go ahead and do the bulk of our bag. Um, I found a good material here I left in my notes. Canvas beige, C-A-N-V-A-S. Again, if you guys have something like leather, I think I have some leathers in here, like leather bag. You guys can pop that on, right? Something like that could be cool. But I'm gonna try to stick again with this reference. Um, so I'm gonna say canvas beige. The only problem with this guy is it's beige. So we'll need to fix that. So if I jump into this, we have our layers here that are all stacked similar to Photoshop. Um, big thing is, is these squares are too big. So let's go ahead and up this to something like four or five. And it gives us more uh, or smaller, kind of like a rip stop, right? Um, but we need to get rid of these wrinkles. And I think we have some parameters down here. Is age it? Yeah, so we'll turn that down a little bit. I like a little. I don't like a lot. So that gives us that. So how do we change the color of the bag? Sometimes we have this color setting here in the parameter. Um, and if I pull up my reference on the other screen and I eyedropper, yeah, we can do something like this. And we just pick one that we like. So something like that's looking kind of cool. 
So let's say if we didn't have this color slider, right? Like if I control Z out of that, how would we change the color of something? Well, we can just add a fill layer and I don't want it to affect metallic, roughness, normal, or height. So we're just gonna affect the color. And I'm gonna grab this base color and I'll drag it off and we'll pick a color that's close to our bag in my reference. So that's looking pretty good. The one problem is, and we notice in this original uh, texture here, is we have some lights and darks, and we can actually see if I go back here. Like, this dark pitting that we have with the texture is pretty cool, but when we add the green, we lose that. We get the, keep the normal and hide info, but um, I like that light and dark. So what we need to do, and I'm just gonna name this to stay organized. Stay organized, people. Uh, we're gonna change this blend mode to the color to multiply. So then we get the, the darker color coming through in the pitted areas and the lighter color coming through in the raised areas, which is kind of cool. But again, we need to go back and make this like something like four. Okay, now that's that. Um, what else can we do with this guy? I want the normal to look a little crazier. A lot of the substance source materials have this normal intensity slider. I like to crank it. And then if I need to in max, I can, you can we can always turn that down, right? in the material slot. So I always like it a little cranked and then I can tone it down later and max if I need to. Okay, so that's looking kind of cool. Um, let's move to the handles themselves. I found a cool material in here called canvas beige. Is it this one? No, not canvas beige. This one is cotton canvas. Yeah, this guy. So I can either, oops, let me control Z out of that. I can either control alt right click and gets us to this texture set, or I can just drag this guy on. That seems pretty easy. So I'm gonna drag it to all of this because I want canvas beige and all that. Okay. One thing it doesn't have is the height automatically turned on. So let me delete that blank guy. Let's go ahead and turn this on. Gives us a little more detail in here. Okay. Now let's go ahead and turn this guy up, the repeat up. Maybe to three. Let me look at my reference. Three's feeling pretty good. I like that. So let's control alt right click on this guy and we will say three as well. So those are looking similar, which is good. And that's good. Uh, let's do four. Do one more. Okay. So same deal with this guy. We need to change the color. This one has a color option for us. So I'll just drag over and we'll pick something, something like, ooh, let's try that again. I missed it. Something like that's looking cool. And then uh, this guy, we need to change the color for this guy as well. So actually what I'll do to keep things consistent, if I go back to this texture set, we have it up here. I'm gonna copy this guy and we'll paste it on to this guy. So paste. We'll have two, so I'm gonna clear one out. That'll keep the colors consistent with each other. Okay, that's looking cool. So stitches, same deal. Control, Alt, right click. We have our stitch layer. Stitches can just be a dark version. They'll just be a dark color. So, I mean, they're so teeny anyways. Let me go ahead and we'll delete this guy. We just have a fill layer. We'll go something pretty dark, which is looking cool. Okay. And then we'll just say color on this guy. Okay. So that's kind of the basics. I mean, we could take off with this if it was something pretty mellow. Oh, shoot, we forgot about our zipper. So let's check on this guy. And materials, let's find just kind of a metal, not a galvanized, but just some, um, maybe this will work. Iron brushed, drag this guy on. Yeah, good enough. We don't really see it in any of the renders. Metal color's good. Maybe we can turn the roughness up so it's not so chrome. Right, so roughness is just how rough it is, right? So no roughness looks like chrome, super rough. Just looks really matte and nasty. So something in the middle would be cool. Now this is why I don't use the ID maps. Um, what I wanna do is I wanna have this texture and the straps show up between or on the sides of the zipper and then the zipper will stay metal. Now. We could use an ID color, but we could also use this tool uh, over here, this polygon fill. This tool I abuse the heck out of. So let's go ahead and we're gonna copy this material from this guy. So right click and say copy. Sometimes Control V and 
control C and control V don't work very well for me. I don't know why, if it's me doing something weird, but let's try it here, control V. Uh, it's gonna make a liar out of me. Is it gonna work? Yeah, it worked. Makes a liar out of me. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna do black mask. So masking, it's just like Photoshop. Uh, anywhere black shows up, this material is not gonna come through. Where white is present, this material will come through. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna add a fill and no, we want to go paint. Sorry about that. We're going to go paint here. And I want to go to this polygon fill. And it's set, we'll set the de default by white. So if we didn't want something to show up, we'd paint black in here. If we want something to show up, we paint white, right? Now, with this uh, polygon fill, we have the ability to fill triangles, the polygons themselves, uh, an actual mesh, so like an element, like an object um, with this guy, and then just a UV island. And that's the one I think um, I'm able to use. So UV island, switch it to white. All I need to do is click on this left side. There you go, and it applies. So again, that's why I don't use ID masks. Um, this polygon fill thing is pretty dang cool. Like example sake on this big bag here. Let's just say I wanted to, I don't know, add black for some reason. Substance painters falling asleep on me. So black mask. And we'll add paint. Okay. And then, like, let's just say polygons. Like, if we wanted half of the bag to be a certain color, you know, we can do that. That's, like, super cool. Um, or if I just want a certain polygon area or a um, UV area. So that's kind of cool. Like, we could just do the top of the bag or we could do the sides of the bag a different color. Um, yeah, what else? The full element, so the entire bag itself we can do. Well, actually, look, if it looks like the bags, it's one element and the top is another element. So it's a pretty cool tool. Um, I use it a lot. And then again, if we want to back out, we can do black or we can just um, add another black mask and it clears it. So some um, cool tool to use. Uh, I, again, use the heck out of it. Uh, get used to using something like that because I think it's a little more convenient than setting up color IDs and then let's say the color ID is wrong, you got to go back to Painter or uh, 3ds Max, fix your colors, yada yada yada. Okay, uh, point ran home. So at this point, let's check notes to make sure we have everything. Yeah, let's start with some edge wear on this guy. So let's start with the bag. What I want to do is I want to take this color and I want to copy it uh, and I want a lighter version of it. So we're going to say and I'll see if it now it's working. Yeah, control C, control V. Let's uh, add a screen to it. We'll add a black mask. And instead of using paint, we're gonna use something called the generator. So the generator uses the maps that we baked uh, to give us um, some control over things like ambient occlusion, uh, curvature, uh, top to bottom, just crazy stuff. So add generator and uh, there's a bunch of them. Let's just say curvature, uh, just for simplicity's sake. If you notice, it's going to apply um, uh, the, the light color that we have on screen to all of the curvature. And I can turn this down how much we want or little we want. And this is kind of like a plug and play one, which is pretty cool. So actually, yeah, we'll just stick with this. Contrast is contrast, makes it real hard or soft, real obviously easy. Um, and two, we can kind of give a little bit of blur to it. So. In the sake for breaking up, as I've said in my other uh, tutorial with textures, we want to break up some of this pattern so it's just not all solid green, same height, that kind of thing. Uh, let's see to here, if we wanted to, we could say height, we could push it down a little bit or up a little bit, right? Just to kind of make, make it look kind of cool. I think that's fine. What I would, do, would want to do though is add some roughness, more roughness to it. Um, okay, so that's looking kind of cool. So let's add some dirt. I want some dirt in these cracks right here. Because let's say someone wore the bag um, for a long time. Maybe they wiped it down. Uh, you get a, kind of a buildup of dirt in here. And actually, sorry, this kind of bugs me a little too much. So we'll turn that back. Oh, sorry. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm turning back the light color, right? I can turn it on and off with that button. But we can um, pull back the opacity of this layer uh, by just kind of scrolling this in and out. So I don't want it as dark. We could also mess with the color. This is kind of a little more convenient. Um, so that's cool, right? Okay, so let's add some dirt. So we'll add another layer. So let's just say this is uh, edgeware. 
Again, name your layers, people. And then let's name this guy dirt. So same deal. I want it really rough because it's dirt. We don't need anything else. I mean, we could add some height to it if we wanted some height in the dirt. I'm gonna add a black mask. We're gonna add a different generator. So I'm gonna add um, this one here, which is the legacy one. Now this gives us tons of control over um, how much grunge we have in this, um, how much it builds up in the corners with our ambient occlusion. It's got its own drop down with the parameters. Uh, curvature, and again, another drop down with how much it's affecting the curvature. Top down gradient, you know, build up on the top of a uh, something if it's been sitting like like snow, maybe you know, that can control that. Um, what else? Just lots of cool stuff. Um, let me back this off. Oh yeah, scratches, scratches in the, is another one too. Just kind of cool for like um, wood, building scratches on wood. But um, okay, let's get focused here. Dirt, going going a little crazy. Let me go ahead and turn this up. Now we have this parameter we can add, which is the range of how far the ambient inclusion is traveling, right? But then we can also change this level. Uh, both of these can kind of push and pull this ambient inclusion range. Um, so I'm liking something like this. And actually, let's change this layer, this blend, so that we see um, everything below it as well. Okay, and we'll go back. Um, what else we wanna do? I wanna do triplanar. If we notice with the grunge, if I turn the grunge up hardcore, um, yeah, if I turn this off, we get seams like here. See how it's not crossing over? Obviously dirt wouldn't just stop right there, right? So if I turn this guy on, it'll cross over. And yeah, it's a little too much grunge. Back that off, just kind of want dirt in the corners. Turn down the levels a little bit. That's looking kind of cool. So again, let's do the same thing. We'll back this off a bit. And let's make this a little brown, browner. Let's see here, because I don't want it to be like dark, dark. Okay, good enough. Maybe crank it up a little more. Hey, hey. So as you can see, we can play with this for a while. We'll turn this up a little bit now that's not so dark. Okay, so that's looking cool. And let's do the edge wear. I'm gonna turn that up now that I turn it down. I know, we just gotta play with it a little bit. It's a push and pull kind of thing. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. All right, let's do the same for the straps. We'll kind of do some edge wear, maybe a little dirt as well. So actually the cool thing about this is, let's say this dirt, since I'm not using a texture, it's just um, a color and some roughness, I can take this guy, Control C, and we'll paste it. And we should get dirt kind of in these cracks here, which would be kind of cool. Yeah, see, look at that. Isn't that cool? So you get the same kind of feel, right? We don't have to recreate it every time. The one thing we would have to recreate is this edge wear, but maybe we can jack it from this guy. What is this? Yeah, so that's a, that's a color as well. It'd be a problem if we use the ca the canvas beige, but let me go ahead and grab this guy and let's paste it on here. Okay, same deal. That's the dirt. This is the edge wear. Let's uh, make the edge wear come through a little more. So it's not super crazy. What if I want a little a little lighter? So that gets a little crazier, right? So something, something kind of cool I want to show you guys is how we break this up, right? Again, break up. We're breaking up this solid color, but now this is looking too perfect. It looks kind of corny to me a little bit. Um, if I hold Alt and I click on this edge where we see the, the mask of this, right? So see how perfect these edges are? And even up here, it's just too clean. What we can do is throw a grunge over it to break it up. So what I'll do is I'll come up here and we'll say add fill and we'll go to grunges and just for fun i'll grab any of them it doesn't matter because we'll end up playing with it anyways but if i grab this um, we need this to break up the texture underneath it so we use a blend mode so i'm going to do like multiply multiply is big and screen is big if i think if i did screen it would go crazy yeah right so i want to break up the white so i need to add this as a multiply and as you see, if I turn this on and off, it goes from perfect to this kind of broken upness. This is exactly what we're looking for. So again, this edge, I'm not a fan of. Let's do triplanar on this guy. That should fix that. Kind of a little bit, not really. 
Maybe if I go a little bit like that, so that's a little better. And if I hold Alt and click back on the Edgeware, we can see this guy. And there you go. So break up. Let me go back. Let's uh, let's see here. I'm gonna adjust this more. Let's do more of this. Balance, contrast. There you go. So without width, kind of cool, huh? Kind of just gets that gets that broken up. So same deal. Let's grab these two. We'll copy them, and we'll move to these. This is a, a different one. So the, what we were messing with, handles, and this is straps. So I'm going to paste these on here. And again, it's going to toss the dirt in for us. It's going to add the edge wear for us. Since we already got the breakup in the edges, all that's going to move over. Um, pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, that's looking kind of kind of dope. I was going to add some dirt to this guy. Yeah, we might as well. Let's just grab this dirt and see if we toss it on here, if that's good enough. Copy, paste. Let's take a look at this. Let it calculate. Oh, yeah, you know what? The curvature map of this is going to go nuts on it, so we'll just have to use AO. So let me back off curvature, and we'll notice this will update. Yeah, see? So then AO... If I do this, it'll end up, yeah, that's kind of cool. So if we look at it, well, again, hold Alt on the mask, we can see the gray area is kind of where that dirt's building up, and that's good. I just want a little bit of breakup. I don't need a lot of bit of breakup. Okay. So looking good. Um, anything else we can play with? You know what? Um, let's let's uh, change this guy out. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let me grab, let me grab something here. Oh, yeah, I already have it. Um, this guy, just a logo from another business I own. Um, I want to project projection map this on. In my reference, I have got this guy here. Um, we can do your own. You can create your own. What you do is just go into Photoshop and actually, let me go back to this. You would create this these white areas. You could do two separate images. So this guy is one image, this guy is one image. And we can basically stamp it onto our model. So let me show you guys how to do that. So from off screen, I'm going to take this um, logo. Actually, here. I'm going to drag it into this area down below. Substance Painter is going to go, what the heck did you just give me? And we're going to say a texture and import your resources too. Now we have this current session. So if we close out, Substance Painter, uh, the logo won't be there any longer. We can leave it for this project. So anytime we open this project, the logo will come up. I use this pretty much all the time. And then uh, the shelf is if uh, we want this permanently in our library. So something like in ArcViz, uh, maybe bricks or wood, something you're gonna use a lot, um, you can leave it on your shelf. But I'm just gonna do this project and we'll say import and here it is. So first let's change the color of this guy. So control alt right click and go to this um, uh, da, da, texture set and I'm going to do a fill layer and let's do this blue color that's on this guy. I'm going to move it off to the side so I can paint drop it and something like that. Good enough. And then let's add a black mask. I'm going to add a paint layer. We'll go back to this fill. We're going to say an object because this little thing is its own little object. We'll make sure it's white and we click. Hey, there we go. Okay. Just needed a sec to update. So that's that. Now let's get our logo on here. So let's go like this. We're going to say blue patch. And how do we want to do this? Let's do, let's do this guy. We're going to add a, instead of a fill layer, a paint layer, and we're going to say logo. And what I want to do is turn off everything but this guy. That was a shortcut for that, but I don't remember, remember it. So if I go back, hey, go away. Um, so paint, let's go to uh, projection. And under here, we're going to say base color. We're going to drag this in. And we'll turn off uh, metal roughness. And height, I want it to be a little raised. We're going to run into a little issue here, but I'll show you guys how I get around that. Now we can hit S for Sam on the keyboard, and we can rotate this guy. Uh, with left click, with right click, it zooms in and out. So we can kind of get this positioned um, how we want it. Something like that's cool. Now, check this out. If I go ahead and, even though it's a PNG, if I go ahead and run this over, um, 
if you notice, see the edge here? When I click, we're getting this edge that runs across the bottom because the height is up. But I only want the height on the letters. I don't want the height on the black part of this PNG that I created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a black mask. And what I did is I created um, like a mask for this guy because I ran into this problem. So we're going to mask out all the black and leave the height information and the color information with just this white area. So all I did is went into Photoshop and uh, you know painted over the white areas what I wanted to keep, turn the background black. So I'm going to drag this in. Same deal. It's going to say, what the heck did we do? Um, not going to say alpha. I'm going to say texture again. We're going to say this project import. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to go to paint here again, and we're going to go to projection mapping. And I haven't touched anything, and I'm, I'm not going to touch anything. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I need to go back to paint. Um, so we're going to have stencil here. So I haven't moved this, right? So it's still lined up with what I drew prior, and we're going to paint this on. And we get that. So we're getting this height information coming through, but it's only coming through on the letters because the letters and the logo are white. So that's kind of cute. Let me back out of that just so we can see it. Back out of that. Okay. Now I want the height information. I don't want the normal information coming through. Let me see if I can knock that out. So if I go to height, we'll say normal. There you go. Gets rid of that. So yeah, by default, for some reason, I think it's sent a linear dodge, which is like an additive mode, um, which is fine. But um, let's just say I don't want the height to come through. So uh, yeah, see that? So if I kill it and just say normal, and let's look at the normals. Maybe there's more information. Same thing with the normals. If I go to normal, no, oh, no, it just isn't the height information. So that gives us a little logo, which is cool. We could paint anything on that we wanted anywhere. Um, a lot of times I deal with PNGs. If we didn't have height on this channel here, we wouldn't have to do that work around uh, with the alpha channel that we paint on. Um, but that serves that. Anything else I can think of? I don't think so. Okay. So actually, shoot, 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 yes, displacement I wanted to cover. So I did a render of this, and when I rendered it, uh, this part felt really flat. And same thing with the bag. So uh, I ended up creating the displacement map that I wanted to pull out and use the V-Ray displacement um, to kind of give it a little more realism. So how do we end up doing that? Um, if you notice, if I create another channel, there is no displacement in here. It's just height and normal. So we need to tell Substance Painter we need to extract a displacement map. So to do that, we're going to go up here under Texture Set Settings, under Channels. We're going to click a plus, and we're going to say Displacement. Now, if we look at our texture set under Straps, if I go to the main texture we had, and go back to base color, this uh, canvas washed out, I can now turn on Displacement. And it's going to give us extra detail in here. So if I go to Material, we can view each of the channels individually, base color, metallic, all this jazz, and displacement we can see. So then you can see this is kind of going to be our displacement map. To be honest, it looks terrible. So let's go ahead and fix this. What we're going to do is we're going to add a uh, add levels here. And we can choose uh, what channel we're going to uh, adjust, basically. So I can say displacement. For some reason, this is cranked all the way up. I don't know why. So let's fix that. That's probably why that was the issue. So let me crank these. I want a pretty pretty contrasty um, map. So something like that's kind of cool. So let's do the same for the bag and the, the handles. So if I right click, uh, control alt, right click on this, same deal. We're going to say uh, add our channel, displacement. OK, and then add displacement here. Same deal. We're going to go add levels, change it to displacement. I don't know why it defaults to that. It's not very helpful. And let's change back to displacement. Let's try to get it matched to this guy. So I think we did something like this. Oh, hey. So that's kind of consistent. Again, Control Alt, right click, go to the bag. Same deal, canvas beige. We need to add our displacement channel. We'll do so like this. Add displacement. And let's check this out. How's that looking? 
same deal. Let's, uh, let's make that more contrasty. Oops. Add levels. Displacement. So again, kind of contrasty. Making it more contrasty will add more detail, uh, more pushing and pulling. Uh, remember from my, my uh, displacement texture video, anything that's white is getting pushed real hard. Anything that's black uh, is either zero or getting pushed in. So we want that real contrasty. And that's good. So we'll go back to lighting material and that'll be part of our export when exporting out. So let's talk about that now. Let's say we have everything situated. This is perfect. Everything looks great. Let's go ahead and get these textures out. We're going to run into a problem here and I'll show you guys. So we're going to go to file, export textures. Um, let's go ahead. I again previously did this and had some issues with the audio. So I'm having to redo it again. So let me go ahead and delete before I get over there my texture file. This guy, we'll delete this guy. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my duffel bag. We're gonna create a new folder. I suggest you do the same to keep yourself organized. We'll select the folder. So that's up here where this is gonna be exported. The default's in like my documents or somewhere weird like that. Um, now the config, this is gonna be uh, what uh, export you're going to be using or what render engine you're going to be using. So Unity, um, you know, we got things like CryEngine, Corona, Arnold. Um, I'm using V-Ray, so we'll click V-Ray. And then we need to choose the resolution of each of our exports. So you got to think about where this is going to be in the scene. How much information do we need to see off of this guy? Um, if it's tucked in the corner, we can keep these real low. If it's something that's going to be like right in front of the camera, we need it real high res. Um, so if I want something that's like real high res, let's do 4K on the big portion of the bag. The buckles can be kind of low res because they're just stashed. We don't really see much of them anyways. Um, the handles are a big asset. We'll keep it 2K. Stitching, let's drop that down to 1K. Uh, straps are real big, so we'll leave those. And zipper can go to one because technically speaking, uh, in the front, we don't even really see that. So um, we could do, should we do straps and handles? Let's do 4K for those too. Now, a lot of times I use JPEGs. Um, let's say I get this all into V-Ray or 3ds Max and I do some changes. When I leave it as a JPEG, I can come back in, if there's an issue, come back into Substance Painter, do my fixes, resave it, and export out again. And uh, 3ds Max automatically updates when I move over. Some, for some reason, when I use PNGs, it's got everything set up. Ooh, there's a problem, I jump out. Um, if I re-export the PNGs, after everything's connected in Max, it crashes Max for some reason. So JPEGs are good for testing. PNGs at 16-bit uh, are, are pretty large files, which don't have a lot of compression. When using JPEGs, I see more compression in the files. So PNG 16-bits, kind of a medium grade quality, I'll say. And then if you want to go like full-blown, no compression, uh, TIFFs, where are those? Um, just do a 16-bit TIFF. They're going to be really massive or 32-bit, like, like you could get like, I don't know, just a, a um, diffuse texture at like 100, 200 megs or something crazy. So uh, I'm just going to do medium grade. So we'll say a PNG. Where'd you go? There you go. 16 bit. Um, okay. One other thing we need to set up. By default, uh, displacement isn't given in a lot of these uh, render settings. Um, so we need to tell Substance Painter, I want the displacement map out of this because we have the channel set up, but we haven't configured the exporter on this. So if I go down the V-Ray, I have it because I've created it, but uh, let's just say that's gone. How do we get uh, displacement on this export list? Now, knowing uh, displacement is a grayscale map, there's no color in it, just a black and white map. So we're going to say grit's going to be a grayscale map. And then all we need to do is take our displacement here and drag it over to our gray and say it's going to be uh, our, our, in our gray channel. This is alpha. We don't need that. So just the gray. And that's it. Pretty easy. But we need to name it. So I'm going to grab this um, uh, this naming convention here, which gives us the model name, underscore, and then I'm going to say displacement. Uh, there. So that's it. Now, same deal with opacity. That doesn't come stock. I think emissive may or may not come in there stock. Um, but yeah, well, if you do something like glass and do opacity, um, you'll need to add that one as well. Maybe we can do that in another tutorial. So we have displacement added. 
we have what resolutions we want, we have compression type or file type, um, we have what export we want and where we want it to go. Uh, so I don't think there's anything else I need to do. I'm just going to hit export and it'll start writing these to disk. Now it might take a little bit of time uh, sometimes because we'll end up, uh, it'll upscale some of these textures which can cause issues. Um, so we just need to let it kind of do its thing and we'll be back here in a second when it's all done. I'll see you guys on the other side. Alrighty, so everything is done. Let's go ahead and check out our textures. If I go into here, uh, here they are. So got all of the diffuse glassiness, height, IOR, normal reflection. So this is your normal spec glass workflow in V-Ray, not PBR. Um, and then we've noticed on the duffel bag handles and straps, we've got this displacement because we added the channel just on those uh, texture sets, not across the board. So like stitching doesn't have it, zipper doesn't have displacement. So, all right, um, let's jump over to part four where we'll talk about uh, how we're gonna go ahead and kind of set this up uh, in V-Ray and kind of get some lighting set up um, and everything kind of work in within Max itself. So I will see you guys in the next one.